the consequences of uh, extending the upper income tax cuts based on what we've already heard fairly explicitly in the political environment is that uh, you do that now, you're going to do it forever. You do that now, you're going to do it forever. The president clashing with members of his Economic Recovery Council who warned him hiking taxes on the so-called rich right now would hurt the economy. Stunningly, the president seemed to admit it's probably a good idea to, 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 let, to delay those tax increases, but he fears that if he doesn't stick it to the rich now, he may never be able to raise their taxes. They might not be rich any longer. Why is he so intent on making one group of people who already pay the vast majority of taxes pay even more? My own Council of Economic Advisors is here. Our freedom fighters, trend forecaster Jerry Salenti, radio talk show, show host Leslie Marshall, and my my friend and Fox colleague and host of the wonderful morning show, Varney and Company, or as he would say, Varney and Company on the Fox Business Network. Stuart Varney, my good buddy Stuart, Thank to you. you first. Why is the president so intent on taking what the Congressional Budget Office estimates would be $600 billion for away from investors and having the government consume it? Income and wealth redistribution is at the heart of every single policy initiative that this president has come up with in eight months. So reason number one, income redistribution. Point number two, he thinks that if you keep low taxes on the rich, they won't spend the extra money that they're taking home. He is absolutely wrong. The rich control 37% of all spending. They would spend that money and invest the rest. Leslie, private industry produces wealth. The government consumes wealth. So which is a better way to make use of $600 billion? The, the number, so you know, is the Congressional Budget Office's estimate of what would come into the government if the Bush tax cuts on the rich are allowed to expire. Which would be a better way to produce wealth with that $600 billion? Invested in private economy or consumed? consumed by federal bureaucrats. Well, Judge, I'm a history buff, and my history shows me that in the Clinton administration, without Bush tax cuts, over 23 million jobs created. With the Bush tax cuts, less than 8 million jobs. Unemployment went up every year in the Bush administration. Right now, we have unemployment hovering around 10 percent and a bad economy. Statistically, the rich people did not spend and, and stimulate the economy with this money, nor did they hire people, at least in this country, with this money. Uh, show me the money. Show me the jobs. And the authors of this specifically had a 10-year time frame. If they felt it would benefit the economy longer than that or at all, they wouldn't have had 10 but years. The, they would have Jerry, had 15, 20. But Jerry, the rich don't put their money in a shoebox. Wherever they put it, it has to enhance the economy, whether they put it in a bank or whether they risk it in an investment. Particularly the people that are going to be hit the hardest. The president is being disingenuous. He's calling people that are making over $200,000 a year rich. And when you look at the numbers, 80% of the people that are going to get hit are people making between two hundred dollars and $500,000 a year. It's not poor, but it's not rich. We're not talking billionaire class. And these are the people that support the community. These are the people that support the arts. These are the people that are active. And these are the people that are going to get hurt the most. Might this be the reason why so many Democrats, especially Democrats, running for re-election in three weeks are running away from the president? Yes, it's bad economics. It's also, it may arise the issue of morality. Yes. I think it is flat out immoral to take more than half of anyone's income, more than 50 cents on the dollar. If you add up federal and state income taxes, you are taking more than half of people's income. That is immoral and, dare I say it, un-American. Have you ever heard the argument that taxation is theft? Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> Leslie, why does the president want to take this money from the most productive people in society? Stated differently, why are Democrats running for office, running away from the president on this one? Well, first of all, I'm a Democrat, and I have cojones, guys, and I think any Democrat running away from the president lacks backbone and cojones, and, and, and they shouldn't do that, and I think it's actually hurting right, but the party. You're not, you're not running for November anything. Your, your job oh, is I'm not on the line. I'm too smart for that. I'm too, I'm too smart for that, Judge, please. Uh, because, you know, talk shows stay and go, regardless of politicians yes, in the we White do. House and in Congress. Uh, but in, in answer to your question about why would he want to do this, let me tell you something. I am not a money gal. I am not a Wall Street person. All right, 30 and, seconds. Uh, Go ahead. I, I don't even play Vegas, but Warren Buffett is. And Warren Buffett thinks this is a good idea, and I think he's done pretty well. I stand behind WB on this. All right, Marsh, Marshall, Salenti, Varney, stick with us. 
as the trial of Ahmed Jelani for bombing U.S. embassies in East Africa in 1998 moves forward in federal court in New York City. Here's something you have a right to know about the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution prohibits forcing a person to testify against himself. It prohibits the government from engaging in all forms of coercion, whether they call it enhanced interrogation or torture. The government tortured Mr. Galani in a foreign country, forgetting that wherever it goes, the Constitution follows, and it kept him locked up for 12 years before charging him with any crimes. The reason the Constitution prohibits torture is because of the framers' horrific experiences with governments and kings who thought they could do anything they wanted to obtain confessions or testimony. Now, why am I telling you this? Because earlier this week, in Mr. Galani's trial, Judge Lewis Kaplan barred the government from presenting critical evidence to the jury because the witness's name and involvement in the plot through whom the evidence would have come was obtained under torture. In doing so, he wrote that he was acutely aware of the perilous times in which we live. But, he said, quote, the Constitution is the rock upon which our nation rests. We must follow it, not only when it is convenient, but when fear and danger beckon in a different direction. To do less would diminish us and undermine the foundation upon which we stand. The judge did the right thing. At the time Mr. Galani was being tortured, he was thought to be a witness to someone else's crime. If the government could get away with torturing him, it could justify torturing you. We don't condone torture, period. God bless you, Judge Kaplan, for upholding the Constitution. The White House and the media seem to be declaring that the top bailed out banks are paying back the massive amounts of cash the federal government dumped into them. Does that make TARP a success story? Back with our freedom fighters, Salenti, Marshall, and Varney. Jerry, to you first. How could anybody argue that TARP was successful? It was a roaring success. They bailed out gamblers that lost a lot of money, and they rewarded manufacturers that were inefficient and shouldn't have been in business because what they were making. It was the perfect thing, and it also did everything they promised it wouldn't do. They promised they were going to help 4 million homeowners. This was for the little people. Right. 460,000 were helped. Leslie, wasn't it basically a fraud? I mean, didn't President Bush and Secretary <laughs> Paulson go to the Congress and say, we're going to buy toxic mortgage assets and we're going to stop foreclosures? They didn't buy a single toxic mortgage asset. They didn't stop a single foreclosure. They just shoved cash down the throats of banks, many of whom didn't want it and didn't need it. I think they were looking for WMDs on Wall Street, Judge. Uh, actually, they, they sold a bill of goods, and unfortunately, Congress, the former president, the current president, did not listen to the American people. Left or right, myself included, majority of Americans were against this. And the, and the reason is, hey, look, you know, in, in the private sector, you know, if you screw up, you screw up. You don't get a second chance, and you certainly don't have the and government coming to bail you out. you don't get a safety net from out. the government. Now, my dear Stuart, I want to read Absolutely. something to you. Quote. The government wants to control the banks just as it now controls oh. GM and Chrysler and will surely control the health industry in the not too distant future. Keeping them tarp stuffed is the key to control. And for this, this intensely political president, mere influence is not enough. The White House wants to tell them what to do. Control, direct, command. Do you know who said that? Uh, I believe it was me. In the Wall Street Journal. Do you still agree with that, what you wrote a year ago? Control, direct, and command was the real reason for TARP? Let me take you back to September the 18th, 2008. America and the world were on the edge of an abyss. The government acted with TARP. It stopped a financial panic, the first financial panic we had seen in a hundred years. I think the government did the right thing. It was effective. It stopped the panic. And I think the government has an obligation to act in those circumstances to prevent 25 Lehman does, does bankruptcies it, it, the following week. Does it not matter that they borrowed the money from the Chinese? Does it not no. matter no, it does that not. they saved no. some and let others die on the vine? And where no. did they draw that line? You're arguing principle. I'm arguing practicality. It worked. Without it, we would have had a catastrophe. Thank heavens for Mr. Paulson. Jerry, 
We, the government is still owed $70 billion from GM. How are they going to get $70 billion from a company that isn't even worth half of that? And not only that, they have all this other toxic paper from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It's a fraud. There was never ever any evidence that this thing was going to collapse if Goldman Sachs didn't get money, if, if Credit Suisse didn't get money, if Barclays, if Deutsche Bank didn't get money. To me, it was a big hoax. They didn't do what they pledged they were going to do. Lunchtime, Did Thursday, September the 18th, the money funds in America, the Putnam Group of Funds froze up. Goldman couldn't get at its money. That Wesley, is a financial wouldn't it, panic. Wouldn't it have been better to let the people that mismanaged the banks fall by the wayside and let others pick up the pieces that worked, like when, when Barclays picked up the pieces of Lehman Brothers that worked and turned them profitable? Yes, because no. last time I checked, that's the American way. That's the private sector, and we need to have a distinction between the private and the public sector. What we see here, guys, is politics in its finest. Maybe TARP worked for the idea and perception of the American people, but we're not seeing, and I think it is too early to tell, quite frankly, seconds, the last where it has worked economically. You would take the risk of 25 Lehman bankruptcies in the following week. You would roll the dice with that kind of thing, and a 25% unemployment rate the, the month after. You, judge, would take that risk. I would let the free market take care of this and that's the way it should be otherwise you set a you set a false impression that you can be as risky as you want and the government will back you up